You may remember at some point uh, in grade school learning how to write a story. Does this sound familiar to any of you? Uh, second, third, fourth grade, somewhere in there learning. Um, really this, uh, how I remember it was this, you know, principle of journalism that was um, giving you some guidance for how to get all the necessary components, all the necessary details into a story so that it makes sense. Does anyone remember what those things were? They all start with the same letter, for one thing. Do you know, Mr. McMorrow? Who, what, when, where, and why. And sometimes you even get a bonus how. doesn't start with a W, but it has a W in it, so it's like an honorary sixth member, perhaps. But yeah, you got to get the, the who and the what and the why and the when and the where uh, into your story so that it actually makes sense. Have you ever read a story that doesn't make sense? Maybe it doesn't have all of those components, and you're thinking, something's missing. Uh, this is a little bit hard to follow, perhaps. You know, imagine if you read a story and it said, there's a pack of rabid wolves on the loose. Which of the W's do you think might be important to know on that one? Where? <laughs> yeah, where is it? <laughs> is it like in my neighborhood? <laughs> or is it somewhere far away? It might depend on how you live that day, right? Um, it could be that the story is, you know, manhunt underway for dangerous person. Which, which W might be important then? Who, where might be too, but who? Is it someone I know? Is it my next door neighbor? Wait a minute, is it me? No. But these details are important as you're looking at stories so that they make sense. We're thinking about a story here today. The story of how God has given us all that we have. But that's not the end of the story, right? That, that's, a, that's a great start to the story. But there's also part of the story that involves us uh, responding to all that God has given. And it's a, it's a wonderful story of salvation for us and service to our neighbor. And we have to get all of the details in the story to make sense of it so that then we can continue to participate in this story of God. And so we're going to be looking at these five W's as it pertains to our giving, how we give of ourselves from what God has given to us uh, for the sake of those around us. So that's kind of where we're going uh, here today, the who, the why, the what, the where, and the when. And so first, uh, we are going to, uh, to look at, so you've, you've already thought, we've, we've, thrown, we've thrown you all off today, we started not at the same time we normally do. There's a bunch of stuff set up in here. And then you also, you, you're thinking to yourself already, and on top of that, Pastor Smith forgot the scripture readings. And you're deeply troubled. Well, have no fear. They're, the scripture readings are in the sermon, <laughs> kind of interspersed throughout the sermon here today. So I have not forgotten them. Although one thing that I did forget was my clicker to advance the slides. So I'm, I'm going to have to rely uh, on you guys to do that for me. So our first, uh, our first text that we need to look at here is from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 40. This is a story that Jesus tells. It's a parable. And he tells about what's going to happen when he returns in his glory on the last day. And he's going to talk to, well, here we're going to hear, he's going to talk to those who uh, are his sheep. They've followed him. They, they have loved him. And so let's see what Jesus says uh, to the sheep. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, 
Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. And so here we have our first W, we have the who. And first of all, the first part of the who is it's, it's us. It's you and it's me. We are the blessed, redeemed children of God. We are the sheep that the shepherd has been guiding. Even the Lamb of God laid down his life, the shepherd laid down his life to for the sheep. That's us. We have been loved with an overwhelming love. And so now, we are participating in this story of God, of giving of ourselves for the sake of those around us. And so it is, it is just so wonderful uh, here today, even just to look out and see you know, all of the opportunities to serve and all of the wonderful servants that God has raised up. Pastor Bugler and I were talking about that this morning. We were just like in awe of all that God does in this place. Because if it was just a few pastors trying to do stuff, we wouldn't be able to do a fraction of what God's people all together are able to do. So it is a beautiful thing to see it working. And so that, that's what we're, we're celebrating today, our, our servant volunteers um, some of whom, you know, are, are more like on the front lines, so to speak, and you're thinking, oh, I know this person does this, and that person does that, and, but there's also wonderful volunteers that are more behind the scenes, and it's, it's all equal work. It's all wonderful the way that God has the body of Christ functioning. So we are so grateful uh, for that the who around here is you. But there's another half of the who as well, and that is our neighbors who need the service from our hands. Because we, we look around, it's not hard, right? It's not hard to look around and see people that have needs. It's everywhere, right? Physical needs that, you know, for instance, we have our hunger ministry that addresses the physical needs of people around us. But there's also basic needs like emotional uh, support and spiritual needs. And so we, we have people who pray and we have people who share the gospel of Jesus with each other and, and just come alongside with, with an ear to listen and a heart of compassion. So we, we look around and, and as, as we know how blessed we are, we know that God then sends, out, sends us out to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing to others and, and that's how we function as part of the story of God. And it is a beautiful thing. It's also beautiful how Jesus explains that at the very end of that passage that we read from Matthew, that when you are serving, I mean, it's, it's, it's good enough just on one hand, it's, just, it's good enough to just serve people around us, fellow human beings made in the image of God who need our help. It's good enough right there. But then Jesus gives us he, one better. He says, and as you're doing that, you're also serving me. It's amazing. We gotta move on to our next scripture reading now. And this is from Ephesians chapter two. Paul writes these words, and you already have heard these probably a bunch of times. Uh, it's really the foundation for, you know, for how we're saved, right? But then verse 10 talks about really what happens after we're saved. You know, what is that response? And so this is what Paul writes uh, to us. This is gonna get us at the why. We've done the who, we're gonna get to the why. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the why. We get confused sometimes, maybe, you know, why, why am I doing any of these things? Normally in life, right, if you do something, you usually get something back in return. There's a, it's kind of just a series of inputs and outputs in life, and so you might think, well, maybe this living as a Christian, you know, being part of a church is going to be the same way. Well, not, not so much. The why of our giving of ourselves is not to be saved, right? It is not to make God love us more. He couldn't love us any more than he already does. We couldn't, you know, I think about it this way. It's like I come before God and think, hmm, I wonder what I have to offer God. 
I actually do have quite a bit to offer God. I'm going to speak personally. You guys can take this however you want to. But I, what I offer God is a whole bunch of sin, <laughs> a whole bunch of guilt. And I just say, here you go. <laughs> no, and, and God takes it. And he says, oh yeah, I, I've, I've had a plan for this all along. It involves a cross. So Jesus takes it all, goes and dies on the cross, and then he, our hands are still open and they're, still, they're empty now that we've gotten rid of our sin, and he fills it up with all manner of blessings, with his righteousness, with his forgiveness, with eternal life, with uh, us, our, our identity as the children of God. And now we've got more than we can even have just for ourselves. And he sends us out to, to share these things and to share the message of Jesus with others uh, the way that we've been blessed. So the, the why that we do things, you know, it's, it's really not for our personal gain. All of our personal gain has come only from Jesus. We've got nothing to offer. We cannot move ourselves. If, if you or I were, were able to devote every waking hour to all the most wonderful um, acts of service imaginable, we would not, by ourselves, make, make us even an inch closer to getting to heaven. It's all Jesus. But the why for us, why do we serve? We have to get it in the right category. It's because God has saved us. It's because God loves us so much that we, you and I... We, it's like our lives now are, are just like a thank offering to God. Everything that we do is motivated by gratitude and just this, this overflow of love and blessing from God. We can't help but share it with other people. And I know you've heard this before. <laughs> You're thinking, yes, pastor, I've heard this one many times. Well, for me, I can never hear this one too much because sometimes I start to veer off and go into the ditch and think the wrong way about it. So I, I have to be reminded, and I thought, well, if I need to be reminded, maybe these people need to be reminded too. So a good reminder for us, we serve because of what God has done for us out of, out of immense gratitude. That is the why. And now I've got another Bible passage. Paul, again, different letter. He's writing to the Romans now. And uh, this is one of a handful of passages that Paul writes uh, talking about the concept of the body of Christ. You guys have heard of that before. I, I said it earlier. I used that phrase earlier. Um, the body of Christ refers to this strongest, deepest connection that we have in this world. And that is the connection that we have by faith in Jesus. There's nothing deeper or stronger, nothing more unifying than the faith that we have in Jesus. And so Paul says, you're in the body of Christ. Christ is the head, and we're the body. We are members of the body of Christ. We're connected to Christ. We're also connected to one another. And in the body of Christ, there is a wonderful diversity that God brings together. A diversity, and we'll talk about that here more in just a little bit, but a wonderful diversity of different gifts and passions. So I want to read... Um, what Paul says then here in Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Wouldn't it be so boring if we were all the same? If we just all had the same things to offer? You know, it, it would be kind of boring, it'd be redundant, but... That's not how God has created us. 
And you look at every gathering of God's people, every church throughout the world, there's going to be a diversity in the gifts, the talents, the passions that he has given to that particular group of people. And it's the same way here in our local church here at St. Paul. And so we're getting to the what now. The what is, uh, it's it's those things that we have, that God has given to us, that kind of, um, whatever, whatever it is, it's a unique set of gifts, uh, talents, passions, and skills that we have. And then God deploys us in different ways according to these things. Um, it's, it's always interesting um, you know, to, to kind of like take a regular inventory of, of the what. You know, what do I have? To ask questions of yourself, you know. What do I have? What has God given to me? What skills do I have? What, what passions is he building up uh, inside of me? You know, those, those things kind of change from year to year sometimes. You know, what you think about, it, like, what, what gets me up in the morning? What do I feel strongly about? When I think about my church or my community or the, the Cleveland area, like, what, what do I wish was happening around here? What, what need do I see that needs to be filled? What do I have? What's, what's the what? To think about that regularly, and it's uh, it's wonderful. I think there's always a danger when you're a good church-going person. You know, we we gather into our buildings and we talk about all manner of things. But sometimes the things we talk about, we're like, oh yeah, you got to do that out there. But it's kind of more theoretical, <laughs> more abstract. Well, that's one of the things I, I like about today. We're surrounded by all these real life opportunities, visual aids for us to see what it is that God has uh, laid before us, ways to serve according to needs that are around here. And it's fun, it's fun to just look around and see, oh yeah, that's right, some of those things we talk about, oh yeah, those are real. You can put you know, flesh and bone on those things. And so you know, may, maybe the what for you, maybe it, maybe it involves thinking, oh yeah, maybe, maybe I'm kind of drawn to Things having to do with worship, you know, music or helping with technology or preparing uh, the worship spaces, uh, maybe greeting with a friendly face it might be one of those things. It might be, you know, what really um, drives me is working with kids, you know, investing in the next generation, Christian education, helping with youth group or Sunday school or vacation Bible school. Uh, one of those things might be exciting. Maybe you're gifted in that way. Maybe it's evangelism. Maybe you're, you like talking to people and you and you know how to talk about what Jesus means to you and you, and you want to go and do that. Or maybe you just, maybe, maybe you just want to pray for people. Be, be in a prayer ministry, just pray, just commit to praying. That actually might be the mightiest thing that you can do <laughs> is praying. It might be uh, like human care type ministries, like our hunger ministry or our comfort dog ministry or our quilting ministry or Stephen ministry. Or just, there's all manner of things that God has, has raised up passions for here, here in our church for you to think about you know, where, where God might be, might be leading you. I know there's, uh, you know, we get this many people here, there's going to be different categories. Some of you are thinking, Pastor, I'm already helping with like three or four different things. Please don't make me do another one. And I, I would say, go in peace, keep doing what you're doing. That's wonderful. Some, some of us, you're thinking, Pastor, I know I, right now I'm not serving in a ministry at St. Paul, but you should see all the things that are on my plate in my other vocations, right? We use that term to refer to all the callings that we have, all the roles that we have, not just in our church, in our personal life, in our family, in our work, in our community. If, you know, you, you alone are the expert on what your capacity is. So if you're already however you're serving in all those vocations, that is good and God-pleasing and it is wonderful. So keep doing what you're doing. But there might be some of us that are thinking, you know, I, Pastor, I've been thinking about what is God? God's messing with me. He's nudging me. He wants me, I think he wants me to do something. And so a day like this, getting to walk around and, and just discern with, a, with an open heart, with a genuine interest in what he might be um, having you to do, it, it's a wonderful thing. Maybe you're new to our congregation or newer, 
and you're thinking, I think this might be the, the niche that I am finding. Or maybe there's, there's a brand new passion that God is welling up inside of you, and you're thinking, okay, God is not leaving me alone on this thing. I think I might need to get involved somewhere. Or it might be that just a, you're, you're in a transitional time of your life, and God has freed up something. And just to ha- have an openness to what God might be doing. We read earlier from Ephesians 2, you know, it talks about how God, God prepares beforehand. I memorized it as God prepares in advance. The good works God prepares in advance for us to do. Uh, the cool thing about that, well, it's cool. It's cool in one sense. It's kind of scary sometimes. It's that God, he prepares those things in advance for us to do, but he doesn't check with us first. Have you noticed that? He puts things in your planner sometimes and double books you and you didn't even, you're like, oh, but the thing that he schedules usually is more important than what you had scheduled. But even right now, God, God is preparing good works in advance for you to do. You don't even know them yet, but just to, for us to have an openness and a willingness to what God might be leading us into uh, is a beautiful thing. Uh, so I know some of you have already been browsing around uh, beforehand, but, but I encourage you to, to, keep, to keep looking even after worship today. Uh, one of the tables that we have over there, hello, Shelly and Tina, um, is an opportunity to, to fill out a, a questionnaire, and you can uh, look at all the different, there's even more than what we have displayed out here, different ways to serve. You can check some boxes and um, just see what might be possible. It's actually the whole page on our website with ways to serve. Uh, it's just amazing, again, what, what God is doing here. But you can go say hi to them if you haven't already. Last couple W's here, these are short and sweet. The first one is the where, and it, it literally is all around us. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about, I want to get more involved, I want to use what God has given me for good, uh, start, start at your local church. That's a good place to start. Look around and see what God might be doing. Right here, there's need all around us. And then finally, the when. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, when? When? Could I? But when? What, what availability do you have? Uh, whatever time that you're able to set aside. It's amazing. God, we know our God can do big things with even a little bit. Uh, he can do big things even with just a little bit of time. So again, just having that, that openness and seeing where you fit in the story of God here. We've kind of flushed it out with these W's. And it is amazing that we get to participate in God's story, right? He has given us so much and I pray that he will Make it clear for us that he will, he will nudge us where he needs to nudge us so that we can, as we have been blessed, we can be a blessing to more and more people. In Jesus' name. Would you pray with me? Lord God, you have blessed us in countless ways. And we give you praise and thanks for that and and praise and thanks for how you invite us into your story of how you bless others. You could could do it all by yourself if you wanted to, but you, you engage us in that mission to love and care for others around us. Help us to have clarity. Help us, for those of us that are already serving, help us to keep on doing it. For those of us who are looking for a way, uh, lead us in your servant way as you have already prepared in advance for us to do. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.